Um, not to mention the fact that I feel like Alaska covers a good number of time zones. Damn it. There's a fair amount of east-west play there thanks to their proximity to the North Pole. I know that the easternmost part of the U.S., well, it's probably Alaska, or westernmost and probably easternmost, I think it crosses the international date line, doesn't it, gentlemen? I don't think so. You don't think the Curl Mountains or the Curl Islands cross the Oh, no, yeah, line? maybe they do. I'm not sure. Almost 7 p.m. So actually, all right, well, whatever HS is at, he's basically at Brian's time zone or Charles' time he's zone. An hour, he's an hour behind me in Arizona. Yeah, so, so he's I'm, in Charles, Charles' time. Yeah. Oh, it's almost 8 over here. Yeah, where's Charles at? Huh? Where's Charles? Charles is probably eating or something, man. Who knows? Yeah. All right. That annoying Charles, he's simultaneously playing two Hex Encounter games and painting a whole batch of, whole batch of miniatures. Should have got your arena of blood all set up right now. I mean, I, I've got, I, I, it's, it's sitting right here. I need to paint the last uh, Gladiator. Mm -hmm. I got there, the rest you know. of Irregulars Gladiators. Shoot the breeze and play a game and all that stuff and listen to Hexy and all that. Listen to eat crackers. Eat crackers. A little bit of lighthearted cannibalism never hurt anybody. On an awesome Friday night. That's pretty cool. This uh, KOW uh, elf army has like dead elves. <laughs> like undead elves? No, no. Dead elves. Like corpse. It's just got dead guys? Dead elves. Yeah, dead, dead guys. Elves. Dead elves. Dead elves. Ooh. Which can be used as objective markers. Todd, are you setting up any V3 to catch up to me? Uh, yeah, right now I'm probably just going to get two torn down, but yeah. Hey, I'll, Norgan, I'll what's up? up? I'll set it up tomorrow. There we go. Got one of the regulars. Hell yeah, Nord's here. That means we can go back to, to fucking with people. Nord, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I have something that I would call my favorite system, Nord. I realize I didn't really address that question. You were nice enough to ask it. Um, it probably changes a little bit if I had to declare, you know, something that I had the most fun with based on what I'm playing. Um, but yeah, SCS, stuff like SCS is always a grand hit. Same with, you know, Blind Swords. If there's a game that I just randomly pick up and play, it would probably be that Dreadnoughts and Battle Wagons just because it's pretty low barrier to entry. Um, although now that I'm thinking about that, so is Bill Molyneux's stuff. That's usually pretty simple and easy to get a hold of. And the rules are usually pretty similar. Um, whether it's his French and Indian stuff or 1812. Um, or even the, the Horns of the Zulu was very similar to his... French and Indian stuff, which made me really happy because it means I'm able to play both of those without too much trouble. And it also means that anybody who's been around long enough has heard me semi talking about maybe trying to come up with some small unit ACW stuff because that system is so easy to get a hold of that even my simple ass could probably figure that out. That'd be pretty cool. Um, we'll have to see though about that. <laughs> Uh -huh. Hey Charles! Charles, Charles made over here. Charles, hey buddy. So hey, Charles. All, all those people that Charles and Nordic, I can't see everybody on there, but who were on our previous chat, appreciate you coming, being on there, and coming over here. Hell yeah! We're the best fans on the internet, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. best fans on the internet. Yeah, I guess so. Why not? <laughs> Charles, how you doing, man? Everybody bounce off of Brian's channel. We're gonna move back over to Hexy for a spot. <laughs> Brian's so unappreciative of all your efforts. They, they know I talk smack. Oh. <laughs> Holy <laughs> smoly! What? I just opened a fresh jar of pickles, and this one on top is colossal. Hey, oh, I learned that. Uh, if you have, if you drink pickle juice and a, a packet of mustard, that takes your cramp away big time. If you have like a calf cramp, a leg cramp. Yeah, it's because there's 18 gajillion shades of potassium and everything else in there, man. It's good for you. Yeah. It we, works. Didn't, we didn't plan it, Chuck. It just sort of happened. 
You know, you see, man, that's why I need to, you see, man, when we do this, they're like, dude, how come we didn't notify Except you? Except for you take pride in the fact that you never schedule streams, so. Well, because I can't make that commitment. <laughs> Nord, if you ask real nice, Jeff might change. Mm. Oh, Wag! What's up, Wag? Get, get that sexy hexy going on, baby. Waggy's here. I can't wait to see Chris Long play uh, MFS. Now, for all you guys that join in, when you say hi, you need to say, hi, this is what's on my table. Oh, there you go. That's good. Oh, hi. My name is... My name is... My name, my name is... is <laughs> hey, uh, I appreciate you calling me out there. And this is for real, not me being sarcastic, Andrew. Uh -oh. About, oh, Lord. Uh, about playing... Um, uh, blind sword or whatever, as opposed to getting three dog and GBACW. Three dog. You're welcome, buddy. Todd, do you think that I ordered two copies of three dog for my own pleasure? No, but I want you to say it. I think tonight's the first night I knew you did order two copies of that. He's mentioned it in the past. Again, I don't listen. Remember, I don't. In this game, I'm too big. I'm too big time. Wait, uh, what are you? What are you saying, Jeff? Are you saying what I think you're saying? Here on the table. Thank you, guys. Problem is, I gotta sort of elbow you into it. I wish Stigler's game. I hope it comes out first. Yeah, Chris well, Long does have a supposed to buy a game and send it to you. Huh? I thought I'm supposed to want to be the one that buys a game and sends them to you. Well, I knew you wouldn't order this thing, and I figured it's a free order price. But you've got you stickers just... on order, right? Oh, you yeah. Free no, order is a pay it forward for all your Command and Colors games. Oh, it'll be a trade. All right. Chucky, yeah. you're loving that OSG Napoleonic. <laughs> that monster, buddy. Baluja. the camera you guys ever war game places that you took vacations to oh is that who that is he on here what what'd you ask if you oh. ever war game get places you've gone on vacations to oh well i tried to uh, i tried to be rich thing and that just failed hey look guys hi no welcome to my Fun God, now we gotta see him twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can get front and side profile. We, I feel okay. like the, uh, the on, Gilbert, Arizona Sheriff's Department right now. Welcome to my modeling desk. Right now. Welcome to my modeling desk. Very nice. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Great use of sprues. Nice piece of terrain. Thank you, Suburban Scumbag. He left a comment, I think, on my uh, trash terrain. Yeah, man. Brian, show him the OJ glove. Oh, I just put it away in the bag. Ah! Nah. What you guys saw there, uh, you guys didn't see. You were just seeing me being foolish over there. So Brian got some Kings of War elves, and apparently oh. one of them has a very contemporarily appropriate glove that he can attach to them, that I hope he does. Did I tell you all I'm getting a three-bedroom apartment? Yeah, dude, where is that? Is that in the same complex, or are you moving to Kennedy? Hey, it's, huh? like, it's like six feet away from my front door. Oh, nice. Is it in the same building? Yep. I'm going from apartment number four to apartment number two. <laughs> hear that, Jeff? Or hear that, Todd? Jeff's moving big number two, baby. <laughs> what the heck? It has two bathrooms in it. One for number one and one for number two? No. One for you when you visit and the other one for me and Todd while you're here. Oh, man. How much uh... What's the increase for that, for something like that? Um, so I'm in a two bedroom. I pay 1100 And okay. the three bedroom, they already gave me the price. It's going to be 1300 right. Well, 
except for then Jeffy's got that uh, recession I walked, special. I walked in the door over there and I told the girl that our, she's our property manager. I said, I said, I've got something for you. She goes, tell me you're not moving out too. I said, no, this is my retirement home. <laughs> I said, I want, I, my neighbors have told me that they're moving out and she was able to validate it because they put in their notice and I know that they've already applied somewhere else. So I said, I, I told you all I want that apartment, but I, it'd be nice to know ahead of time what it's going to cost me so I can get ready for it. And because it's not a refinished one with hardwood floors or the fake hardwood floors and stuff, um, it's like my apartment is now still got the carpet and stuff in it. It's only a instead of sixteen hundred dollars they charge everybody else it's only going to be 13. nice okay. now granted the, the the third bedroom is not it's like an oversized walk-in closet that's is, fine ty and i still intended i think to sleep in the same bedroom that's where andrew will sleep <laughs> i was saying you have I'm three gonna, bedrooms but todd and i still get to share one right i'm gonna put a twin in there and you both can sleep in the twin <laughs> done just put a hammock in there. We don't need a full twin bed. Because and the bigger, the second bedroom is where my game stuff's going to go. And Todd is spoonable. Stop fucking with the cameras. I'm not doing anything. Um, bunk beds. Oh, bunk beds. Good idea. Oh, we have so much room for activities, Jeff. That's an idea. Maybe I could do that. That or I'll just bring it. You, you go to Lowe's and get a whole bunch of like two and three quarter inch or three inch drywall screws. When I'm bringing a drill, we'll just build bunk beds. Okay. Who the hell's got music on? Dibs on the top. I it might just be playing in the background. Brian's real classy. Uh, it's not disturbing. I mean, I can barely hear it. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, yeah, I don't want to it. Good luck, Chris. I believe in you. I thought about getting my my um, filament printer back out and printing about a hundred golf tees. That'd be badass. Do it, dude. The problem is they'll break every time you hit one because that plastic. That's what I was saying. I think they'd shatter. Yeah. yeah. One one use golf tees <laughs> by Hexy. But hey, I, could, I, feel like could, I feel like you could print some goofy golf tees though. I could do designer tees. Yeah, man. Uh huh. I don't want you on designer tees. You can focus on hitting the ball, not the tee. Painting 28 millimeter orcs. Chuck, I want to see Gettysburg. Haven't you got your copy yet already? No, you said he's still waiting on it, I think. Or wait. Yeah, the Worthington one? He, had, he might have posted that already. Yeah, he might have been waiting to get it on his Yeah, so I don't need the spooners. I don't need to buy uh, a mill store for sacrifice. I'll just play him a card. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you don't need to buy three days of Gettysburg. Apparently not. I didn't realize this. This is news to me. Jeffy, do you want to be one of the spooners like Todd and I, or do you want to be one of the slotted spoons like Brian? No, because <laughs> what, there's two Asian dolls in my bed. There's no room for you guys. Oh, no. I have, I have not played Western Front Ace, <sighs> Lord. Is that... Is that playable or is that a little crunchy? I was. No, no, no. It's like solo, I think. In fact, Camp played. We should have asked Camp about it. He's played is, it. Is that one of the uh, like DVG? Uh, I think it's Compass, actually. Okay. But yeah, I think. Well, well I don't know, actually. No, Western Tank Aces. I don't know. He'll, someone will tell us. I don't know what the, I'm talking about. Western front face. It's by Compass. Compass, okay. Oh, shit. Yeah. I don't What's know up, if you buddy? guys can see that, the viewers. Check out Harvey Homies, man. Too funny. Harvey Homies are cool as shit. Yeah, they crack me up, man. I think Fox, he's the one that went that attended ASU over here. Oh, oh dang. 
he's a sun devil, baby. I'm about to say, how far are you from Mesa? Huh? How far are you from Mesa? Well, ASU's main camp is at Tempe. Oh, I uh, I'm sorry. The ASU East, where my wife is, a librarian at over, which is just, just yonder. Uh, is like two miles from here. That's our East Campus. Where did I get Mesa from? Huh? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out where I pulled Mesa out of my ass on. <sighs> Well, you pulled a mace out of your ass. Who was in there? Oh, <laughs> good one. Wow. Hey, I have to die on his channel. In case y'all didn't know that. I'm a wag. The wag's probably checking his computers, but. Yeah, so he's checking his printers. Oh. oh, man. I got to update all my John Killer games. Oops. Oops. I updated all the Civil War battles once. There. There you go, Lingberg. <laughs> What's up? Uh -huh. Hang on, I can't see. Hang on. Do it again, buddy. What's up? Oh, it's right there. It's on the screen. Uh -oh. Another starter set. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so, and then, and then. <laughs> Chuck, you're right, Chuck. That's good. You ought to make sure his windows aren't on the ground floor either. I don't have to worry about Todd. <laughs> oh, there you are walking up. Check it out, man. Ooh. I see it. That's your Forge Father's one? Ooh. <laughs> Because of the spaceships and the jet bikes. Anywho, Brian, and, uh, on the next, there's the my next Confederate. sixty of my guys. Where? The next sixty of my guys for X and X's challenge. Where is it? I don't see it. Yeah, it's because I'm not sitting right by him right now. Huh. But I got started on those sixty militia. There's your chits, man. Look at hot boxes, chits. Nice. I think that's where I saw it, Charles. If you did an unboxing, oh, I wait. did, dude. Your mask looks awesome. What are the little uh, like cylindrical jobbies in the bottom of it? Is that uh, a World War One sup with camel game or something? Yeah, it's a World War One air combat game on oh, the Western and Italian fronts. I was saying, I, they, I might have to look into that because I think the only World War One air game that I have is Rick Tofen's War, and that's really <laughs> old. And I, have, I looked at it like once or twice and didn't really jump into it. Pretty map, though. It is a pretty map. You are correct. Kind of looks like the Gettysburg Seventy Seven stuff. Yes, I'm about to say I, I got that before I knew what the hell I. It was just. That's one of those very few games just like that, and wooden ships Iron Man that survived from. Right. My first iteration of trying game. <clears throat> I need to put up some more games for sale this weekend. Up a little bit. Hey, Chris, well, how, how far along is the city block project? I know that you've gotten quite far in it. <clears throat> also, is that for that mosque? Are you just talking about the little like? cube guy that you you had printed and and posted up there or, or have you added to that i know you said you were printing the tower um. <clears throat> anyways tomorrow i play that game right there behind me what's that sandwich station do it oh baby Delicious sandwich. please do it so that'll be the beginning um now is it gonna be like like Totally accurate? No. I mean, I can't sit there thinking that, you know, one of the Confederates is going to run off back to Tucson to warn, warn them about the California call. So, we'll see what happens. Maybe that's one of the victory conditions. Nerds, nerds, what's that? Yeah, make it a condition. 
Uh, well, no, the, 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 the objectives on there is, have to, I don't know if you can see the haystack, because that's what they did at Stanwick Stations. They were trying to slow down the call. Oh, and Kevin, they were burning down the haystack. Kevin, he oh. has all kinds of the other ASL stuff. And yeah. he forces me to buy them. Power to attach us. So nerds, nerds on. So what's nerds, nerds doing? Come on, My nerds. guess would be designing pretty badass STLs. Yeah, I think she's just chilling out with a glass of wine. We're just trying to play the New England volunteer scenarios in sequence and we're kind of both playing at the same time to see what kind of outcomes we get. Yeah. You guys were doing that with Villiers Bocage? Or Villiers Bocage? That was a SCS game we all played, wasn't it? And then Canadian Crucible. Yeah, what's the one that we all three played at the same time? Was that Canadian Crucible? <laughs> no, you and Todd played that. We played the city one around on him. <laughs> glass of whiskey. Okay. Oh, Hex and Kessel, right? Around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, I, I thought we played D1. D-Day one. None of, we, the three of us didn't? They... Walker. No, I didn't play any of those with you guys. Yeah, you and I might have played two or three of those, Todd. Uh, okay. I think we did do the Canadian Crucible as well as Villers Bocage. Villers Bocage. Actually, uh, Jeff, do you want to play GCACW with the board or do you want to continue Vassal? No, I think we need to go with Vassal. I think we got a good thing going there because we're going to be going live doing this here before long. Oh boy. oh, boy. We were hoping to do this one live, but are you worried about the break? I mean, I, I'm game to do it live and, you know, the rules lawyers can pound us if they want. I don't care. Because I'm, I'm uh -huh. all, anybody that says they got that shit, every rule of every game perfect is a liar. Yeah, I mean, I, I would... Yeah, I think I think we're going to be slow to start because you know we you know how it is. We got to figure out the victory conditions. Oh, look at that Woodford Reserve, not wine. Fancy. You guys hear yeah, me? We got fancy listeners on this show. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we got fancy listeners on this show. Can you dubers hear me? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I see you. Can't you. hear us. I see you, dude. There you are. Awesome. Good to hear. No one can hear me. Small. Fucking cool. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, we can hear you, bro. <laughs> Don't assume we can't hear you. Woodford Reserve. I'm classy like that. Oh. If, okay. if that bitch fails after he's the one that <laughs> pushed to do this. Oh. He just he just cut out. He's gonna get like, back on. Oh. He's a trooper. Anyway, so Jeff, you know, our first, I don't know, I mean, it usually takes us a while to kind of figure out the VC and the special rules, but I think that, I think we should do it live. We're, we're figuring it out. That's part of playing. Why not? Let's do it. Let him back in. I'll see that. All right. Yeah, I, I, yeah, we'll do it. Do we, okay, so do we want to do it tomorrow night or Sunday night? Uh, I mean, I'm open tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow. Maybe we'll do it Sunday too. I mean, All right. so let's go. Um, <laughs> you saw the best fireworks in the state, Big Murray. <laughs> I do <laughs> the best fireworks in the state. I got like all of them. What are they? Whisker biscuits, spleens, uh, spleen splitters. Hoosker Doos, Hoosker Don'ts, Cherry Bombs, Whistling Bung Holes. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, dude. We're, we're a lot more than just the snakes and whatnot. Yeah. You better believe it. There's even stuff might cost a couple of fingers. You got the box for a scenario list around there, Todd, near you by chance? Yeah, give me just a second. But, yeah, sorry, guys. We had to put on collared shirts. You can see Jeff's wearing a collared shirt, too. We were over on Hex to Hex's channel. And we we're talking to uh, Camp Sawyer, so it was a fancy occasion. And well, wear a college shirt. College shirt. Jeff said I couldn't, I shouldn't wear a Kepi hat, so I had to America myself somehow.
Brian doesn't have to wear hats on account of his luscious locks. No, uh, there's no dress code over here. Wait. No, I'm not going to die. I'm going to leave this all for Yeah, dude. All salt, no pepper, baby. Pepper on top, salt on the bottom. Oh, shit. Somebody's redoing EverQuest. An in in EverQuest? Scenario four, Jeff. We're playing the actual... Oh, Todd, are you watching Fallout? I, I've seen two. Um, let me think. Yes, I am watching it. I'm trying to think. I've seen two episodes. Okay, I'm on the seventh episode now. Yeah. Gosh. Are you talking about Fallout? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I turned it off after 15 minutes. Ah, uh, the, first, the first episode is slow. I will give you that. But Oh, man. Sec, second episode was, I mean... It's good. I'm watching it with my kids, so that's a, that's incentive to keep watching. Yeah, so oh, yeah. I'm on number five. Wait till I get to number, see, number six or whatever. So, Jeff, I'm pretty sure it's scenario four. Right, because we've played three. What's the title of it? An End to Innocence. An End to Innocence. Scenario four. And we're playing that out of like, what book again? Stonewall Jackson's Way 2. All right, on End. Come on, Norton, man, get with it. So we got we got night marching and command paralysis. Stonewall Jackson's way too. Yep. All right, let's let's post a Facebook. I mean, a streamy streamer. What time did you set it for? Uh, what do you want to do? You want to do? I really can't do earlier than seven thirty because I got to feed the dog and walk her and stuff. All right, well, we'll just stick with our normal schedule then. Eight o'clock, my time. Yep. Create live stream. Boom, boom. Yeah, so tomorrow might be a lot of focusing on figuring out how to set up, what the rules are, and then Sunday night we it'd be cool. We turn around the next day and play it. It'd be right. start the first turn. Well, I mean, if we can get some plays in, that that some playing in, that'd be cool. Too. But as you as you may not know, there are twelve different ways to get VP. Make sure you study them all. <laughs> yeah, but penicillin will get rid of it no matter how you get it. So, down, 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 down. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and set Sunday as a day too. All right. Well, let me, let me, I, I say that. Let me make sure. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? I'm gonna set up a stream for Saturday. Why don't you set up a stream for Sunday? Oh my! And you could well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, on my live streaming, I do stuff. We just talked for like a solid hour and a half, hour 40 minutes. That's 35 minutes. Where you refuse to even join us. Who? You. What are you talking about? Yeah, what is it with that? How come you don't want to join our streams? What? I was gone when you guys were doing that. I told you guys that. Now look at us fighting, everyone. Isn't that cool? I'm not fighting. <laughs> Shut up, stupid head. Yeah. Shut up, dumb. 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 Need a picture. Need a picture. You're trying to paint a Union soldier here real quick, man. Oh, I do have a box. Oh. Oh. Man, I don't know what's going on in the chat, guys. But, hey. Oh, oh someone will check it out. What was that? I don't know what the hell is going on, man. I didn't, okay. Didn't know you were gone. At least the beeps now, huh? I heard that beep, so it lets me know. Oh, did it beep you? It'd be nice. Yeah, it, it beeped. Beep. Yeah, that's cool. I wish all these were like streaming out all those would ping you when it's. Yeah. When it's just, I don't, 
I just doesn't say doesn't do anything when like he like someone leaves. So I don't have yeah. a clue. We are only here for problems, Charles. I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Problems. You said, Wait, okay, man. boys, behave or get a timeout. We are only here for problems. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Latora. Uh, Dude, you're this is pretty handy having this little light here just set up here. It hooks to the desk. I can light up the we're over here and then start the paint. Let's bring over here. In a way, it's kind of a uh, kind of a uh, what do you call it? adjustment. I helped out a little bit in the room here. Oh, stand. More. Uh, Whoa. I think we need vape sticks, boy. If you puff on them when there's no fluid in there, it tastes like fucking oh, God. What? These are my little vape sticks that I hit. If you don't pay attention and the fluid gets at the bottom, mm. not doing anything, it tastes like you're fucking smoking from out high. <laughs> Gross. You get, aren't those like equal to 10 cigarettes? Oh, I don't know. All I know is I'm not getting any tar in my lungs. And I'm getting my nicotine fix. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, have you, uh, Hexy, have you tried, have you been on Jardians? No. Uh -uh. Okay, because that's what he's, uh, Doc put me on. I haven't started yet because. What, to, with, what, to control weight? Uh, it, it's a, it's a, for A1C, A1C, it's a type two. And, um, it's guardian so you take a, it's a pill. You don't have to give yourself a shot and it's once, once a day. And what it does, it, you pee the sugar out. That's what oh, you that's, do. oh, okay. Yeah. Right. But you have to drink a lot of water because if you don't, then you end up with a lot of UTI. Right. So that, that's oh, man. Kind of, that's the side effect of it. Gonna burn when Brian pees, you're gonna feel what Jeff and I are dealing with every day. Well, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, summer's it's pretty much summer here, and I sweat a lot, man. <laughs> so I'm sitting there thinking, crap, you know, I can lose a lot of water here, and because you know, what it literally your sugar just doesn't go anywhere if you're not drinking water. It's, Quiet, sorry. You're good. I enjoyed listening to Dr. Warmutt. Dr. Mutt. Oh, dude. Check this out. I'm glad I didn't throw this model away. Let's get this out. Actually, it was in the garbage and I took it back out. This is an old 1983 uh, uh, Star Wars model kit and it's uh, Yoda's hut. Right here. Badass. Do you want to throw it away? Yeah. See that? And That's crazy. And you, this this could be great for a miniature war game. I mean, yeah, dude. Got all these snakes that you could use. But oh, yeah. uh, the scale on this. Here, where's a? Give me a. Here's a soldier here. Here's a twenty-eight. I don't think you see that or not. I like there's a scale on that. Yeah, I think it's great for fantasy or whatever. Yeah, why would you think about throwing that away? Oh, because I was, you know, throwing crap away and then, you know, luckily, you know, my brain turned on and hey. So that looked pretty cool. I think that'd be great for a fantasy game. Anyways, but yeah, there are model kits out there that you can obviously use. All right. Yeah, no, that thing's awesome. Yeah. Uh, old one, man. That, that was a long time ago. <laughs> and then see these things? You, you, you see this. A lot of people use these for the Necrom stuff, these uh, packing, whatever. Yeah. 
you know, I'm not even gonna use it for that. What I do is I cut them out. Take these, I'll cut them out. And I'll bust them into little, you know, scatter train and crap, paint them up and stuff. So, right there, boom, cheap. Absolutely, man. Um, I used to be embarrassed showing off trash train, but now I'm not, man. I don't think it's smart. Oh, okay. buy with you, buddy. I was going to buy a Bandai one seventy second wide wing kit, but they're snapped together kits. That's so much. A snap gear is a big deal. Um, get it, do it. Now you're gonna need the you're doing one seventy second. You're obviously was it one seventy second? Be twenty mil, yeah. Pretty um, somewhere around there. Mutt, what do you think about GW? What's to say? Oh, the female custodies and how bunch, how a bunch of 40k players are now quitting 40k. Man, I don't do the 40k stuff anymore. I only played five games of that, and then that's when I switched to something else. It was just that 40k is too much for me, man. I'm not, I'm not smart as all those guys. So, but um, I, I heard about the female custodies and all, of, all these 40k players are like now leaving over that. So whatever that's about, I don't know. All I know is they're sisters or whatever. So. We're going to imagination land. Good Lord. Yeah. So that's the thing. You know what? You guys, you know, you can give me the bird in the chat if you want, but you 40, the 40K players, man, they need to like, uh, like open up their minds, man. <laughs> <laughs> and just know there's other stuff out there, man. So. <laughs> so. Brian coming in with the hot takes. That being said, uh, yeah, everybody hating 40K, I'm a big, yeah, big fan. Uh, terrible, now, terrible, terrible decision. God awful. You should leave, should leave Games Workshop forever. Uh, Historical Wargaming would like to welcome you. Um, but, I mean, yeah, granted, there, there are minis. Yes, everyone agrees. Yes, they're awesome. Blah, blah, blah. Kind of. Yeah kind of i don't know no, but i would like, still fight you on that sometimes yeah but use those awesome minis for some other game that's easier and enjoyable where you don't yeah, have to buy a library every year quite often <laughs> what i would consider to be nearing over the top to be honest with you i'm not yeah it seems like games workshop maybe had a good balance there for a while and then they went full bore on <laughs> absurdity end of things sometimes yeah just lots of data not difficult rules uh, well that's you're, you're not wrong telemachus the, the the core of the rule system isn't necessarily too crazy but when the entire game seems to be fixated around exceptions to those rules that's when it gets to be a great big bucket of i don't want to play this anymore which actually, an interesting somebody had a really good hot take on that. Who was that? Um, it was one of the YouTube channels that all they do is paint 40k stuff. It seems like uh, Goober Town. Yeah, it was Goober Town. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And it was one of those. He was talking about exactly that and how every time for the past, you know, however many editions he's tried to play it, it's just been no, like just weird and not not as fun and i remember that being one of the things that they did in warhammer before they switched to age of sigmar and then they introduced the little like spell cards or whatever to 40k way back in the day and i don't know maybe sixth edition or seventh edition or something and that was when i kind of said okay i'm done with that one goodbye guys goodbye goodbye yeah oh, the train. i mean i I, <laughs> I went through i was over at my parents house and found just a ton more 40k stuff which means that some of the dudes around here were all drooling and it's like i feel like three quarters of it is not playable now because it's a bunch of space marines on the old bases and stuff like that so i don't but there's just so much crap man i played that i was in that hobby for 15 years probably exclusively and just gobbling stuff up at the time i bought um, all their computer war games and, yeah like uh, dawn of war and everything yeah, wished I had a never spent the money on them. <laughs> that was, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. 
I bought it. I feel like I played Dawn of War 1, you know, a few times. And then Dawn of War 2 I got, and I don't even know if I installed it on a computer. I'm not a big computer guy, so it's not like it's ever cutting edge. So I don't. Todd, I think I want a copy of the Kodeko All-Star Baseball game. A copy of what? Yeah, what? The Kodeko All-Star Baseball game with the discs. Uh, okay. Are we going to get I think Hex I to Hex Play Sports? <gasps> I really, I'm watching all these people shooting these videos of playing golf. And I'm like, damn, man, I ought to do that. You make videos playing, you're going to make videos playing golf? What's up, gamers? I said I should. Are you, are you talking about real golf or card and dice? No, no. Well, so that part was real golf. But the baseball game, I'd love to have that old Kadako. Yeah. Well, uh, Nord, if I watch baseball, it would be the Nats and the, only in the playoffs. But I don't, I played baseball. My dad was a pro. My brother and I both played semi-pro ball. And uh, I don't even care for the game anymore turned into such a shit show. Todd, you might check up at, I don't know what game you guys are talking about, but you might check up at game night. They've got three or four baseball board games. Do they really? On the Todd, East. Yeah. Just check out ID Jester's channel. He's got all these sports games going on. Um, um, the other cool thing, though, is... Uh, I heard you, I heard you, Brian. Yeah. Hey, uh, Greg, how's it going? Oh, dude, what's up, Greg? Is that Greg or Ashley? I would assume it's Ashley. I think it's great. Because usually Ashley says mm. GWC Ashley on it. Hey, uh, Nordic, um, he's a, he's a, he's a uh, Caps fan. That's his sport. And they got yeah. in. As the youth of the nation say today, Jeff's favorite sport is capping. They got in and Phoenix got ran out. <laughs> That's it. My brother was part of the Pirates and Astros minor league while he was in the service. Oh, that's cool. Both of you have that connection. Um, dad played for St. Louis. Your dad played for St. Louis? Yep. The Cardinals? Yep. I got, I got his... Uh, what I got his stuff. Got? No, I have a... Um, let's see if I got... How did I never know this? Oh, my God. I've said it many times. What was his name? Hold on. I got some of his stuff, I think, right here. Was that the legendary Burkett Fry? No, he got all his teeth knocked out by one of the Alu brothers, hit a line drive back in his mouth. I'm just kidding. No, Burkett Fry is the one of the kernels of a red bean at Yeah, Remember? Right. Yeah, yeah, that and Speed S. Fry. And, uh, I don't know if I have it anymore. I have it in a link. Hey, guys, I can get up early. I'm going to head out. Good chatting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, Good night, Toddy. Toddy. Toddy, how long are you batching it? Till Wednesday night. Oh, baby. Wow. All right. Take it easy, Todd. Yep. Say, man. Bye, 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 Todd. Bye, Bye, Todd. Bye, Bye. Bye. Just hang Bye. Bye. Leave. Bye. Oh, there it is, Lee. Bye, Todd. Bye. <laughs> he was struggling to get out of here, man. It's the big red letters. Yeah. So, Jeff. Yeah. On a scale of one to about forty, are you closer to a forty or a sixty that you're gonna have more miniature stuff than Toddy? What? He's not oh, in the Explain to me that scale again. <laughs> what? Explain so the scale, the scale is scale <laughs> one being not very excited and 40 being very excited. Are you closer to a 40 or a 60 that you're about to have more miniatures than Toddy? Um... Can I say 10? Can you say 60? <laughs> I'm not excited at all. I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Yeah, is Todd getting rid of all his minis or something? Yeah. Well, I knew that was coming. Even the six? Yep. Hmm. Why? I don't know. That just leaves That's... you and me, McMurray. Yay. Yay. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know, buddy. I don't. Wow. He and Jeff wow. very happily hit me with that, what, like a week and a half ago, Jeff? Right. Hopefully it's just like Todd getting rid of ASL. You guys can all see how well that went. Oh. Also, Morgan, blah, blah. You guys read this last one from Nordic? No, what's up? Uh, Nordic's talking about how he hates baseball subsidizing. Yeah, laying in the rules they have. Okay, hang on. I'll read it in a second here. Yeah, a lot. I'm picking stuff up at the house. Just a second. That's my dad's um, um, sporting news player contract card. All the minor the St. Louis. Oh, here, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to maximize it. All the St. Louis Cardinal farm teams who played only. Hell yeah. Had a good record, though. That's pretty cool. Didn't it, though? Wow. Hi, hi, world. Let's get in there. No? Okay. How about now? No, no. I recently sold all my miniatures to Noble Knight Games back in January, but I did that to do a hard reset to go back to 15. Nordic said. Oh man, there you go, Nord. There you go. That for a while there was the Tibby Toddy's favorite scale. Um, he might have some 15s for sale if you're looking for. World War Two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> not sure. Much bigger set of board gamers with cats. Yes, I <laughs> refuse to have the kitty cat uh, assistance in this apartment uh, due to the massive uh, wrecks of games that they have made on people's tables. Hint, hint. Nordic Maelstrom. Hint, hint. Kev. I was about to say. Yeah, yeah. Didn't Kev deal with that? Yeah. Yep. Oh, he was pissed. I remember that video he made of the wind blowing all his stuff. Because he opened the door, a door or window at the end of the house, and he opened one of his green room. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what was he thinking? Oh. Man, do you, you, Jeff, you remember that a couple years ago in the wintertime when we were playing Arden and I sneezed and the 101st wound up on Elsinborn Ridge and I almost cried? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man. I agree with you, Charles. I was, uh, well, I pitched, obviously, but I, I was shortstop. I played shortstop forever. That was the end. And I had teams that actually tried to move me to second base. I'm like, nope, I'm a shortstop. Okay. All right. Everybody take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. What? We're not making jokes about Jeff pitching and catching and getting to second base with a bunch of dudes or anything. Oh. Deep breath. Only you could go down that road, McMurray. I didn't. We didn't make those well, here, jokes. That's here, let me we... top off. Let me top off, and this will really get you going. Nord, I'm also a switch hitter. <laughs> we already knew that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. Um. Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. This just became after midnight with warm up now. Nerds, nerd. That's the, the late show with warm <laughs> The late show. The late, late show. <laughs> I ate. I used to coach a travel team of 12 and 13 year olds, and I would train my catchers to call pitches. 12 year olds, 12 and 13 year olds. Hell, I used to teach freaking 9, 10, 11 year olds how to pass block and scheme block in football. And, and a quarterback, and I taught an eight year old quarterback how to audible. Which was funny when they would do it. Because <laughs> it never came out. <laughs> I've got the guns. All right. But, uh, camera wise, it might be a little interesting on this. Why? Table. I don't understand. What's the problem? I gotta try to find the right angle. I don't know. You can't slide the table away when you're playing? No. Why not? 
I got all this stuff underneath here too. Well, that was that was okay. So can't you move that stuff somewhere else? But hey, put it over on top of the wife's desk. <laughs> put it in the desk. <laughs> no. Oh. Oh. But um, I mean, I could reach over, not a problem. But you know, I'll be blocking it. Unless I do, you know, like I do with my Zombicide games, I guess that's okay. Where I do fast play, then I stop it, and then I explain what happened. And then that fast play like games. That's a great idea. Huh? I said that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, that's. I, I think I'm going to just stick to that. Just how I did my Zombicide games. And by the way, there's going to probably be about one or two Zombicide games following this because I got the itch. Well, yeah, what else would follow it? And then Pikachu, Pikachu Pass would be up after this. Oh, oh Pikachu, hey, you mean Pikachu Past? <laughs> past, yeah. Oh, God. Oh. Anyways. Cool. Uh, that was rough. I know. But, um, yeah. Gotcha, Pete. And then after that, man, <sighs> go all narrative, man. It's what? I'm going to go all narrative. Back, good hitters. All narrative. Does that mean we're going back to Grimdale? Well, that and other stuff that I already have mine. Dude, I actually sat down and pen and paper and wrote out. You did what? Wrote out uh, stuff I want to do, storylines and outlines and whatever. That's Maybe pretty that's weird. Problem. Maybe you, you, because you have so many ideas in your head, you can't get to doing one thing. Yeah. That or maybe actually writing it down and planning something will make it a whole lot easier to get it done. I've noticed that with me. Yeah. Um, because I'll, I'll stop in the middle, like in my truck, going from, and I'll, oh, and I'll write it down. And so, because I think he's like, oh, this would be a cool game right here, man. So, but then I wanted, <laughs> okay, man, call me nerd. But uh, <laughs> I just want to get the whole story going. Like, I guess that's a campaign or whatever. Of saying Dragons. characters and stuff, and move them along. Dungeons and Dragons, just kind of like yeah, kind of like uh, the Grimdale that we got going, and then yeah, dude, Dungeons and Dragons just like tabletop now. I mean, how they yeah. So but, yeah, I have about nine war game projects in progress right now, but instead of <laughs> making any progress on those. I'll probably There's start this next week. <laughs> God, I'm jealous of that. Jesus. <laughs> Nine projects, Brian. That'd be awesome. Yeah, but you gotta start playing them, man. Well, I, I. It's not that I. It's not that I don't play nine different games. I just wish I was still on two hands in terms of works in progress projects. So yeah. let me ask you all this question again that I've asked you all probably five times in three years. How many sets of miniatures do you have that you have not played a game with? Oh, good God. Uh, Brian has about 50 starter kits. He has to touch Yeah. That. Yeah. So, yeah. So by that I own, do you mean that I own or that I've actually, you know, constructed and painted? Well, no, we'll, let's say constructed and painted because you guys won't play with them unless they're painted. So. Yeah, that's, I, yeah, I found myself that way now. I know. I'm snooty. I'm a snub. I tell you, man, well, I'm serious, guys. Once golf season starts, I just get on. Um, I mean, I go through phases through the golf season where I'm doing any tabletop stuff, you know, any hex encounter stuff. Yeah. And I usually need somebody to get, that's why I'm playing, I think, playing this stuff with Todd or us doing this stuff with me, him, and Andrew. Or if you happen to get Picacho Pass set up, I need that kind of stuff keep me going because what happens is if I don't do something for a while and then the motivation starts to fall away and I don't get something to motivate me I go into a stagnant period mm. so, or, uh, that's good there. he has two, two sets hexy you see that I'm not going to lie to you it, 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 it was fun to pick up the paints and put paints on those guys and paint them that wasn't going anywhere with me. <laughs> <Get> nerds, nerd. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Jeff, that's a good question. I don't. I think that number is pretty low for me, to be honest with you. Because I mean, I've, I've 
I tend to paint so that I can play with stuff. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, but I mean, I, I'm thinking in, in just in the last year, I know damn well I've seen you work on 25 different sets of units for something, but I can't put my finger on where you've used them all. Um, so let's see stuff that I've done this year that I've completed out on. Let's maybe like Wiley stuff. You, you, you go to town on getting them done for like Wiley games hangouts or whatever. Accurate. Uh, hang on. I'm going to easy thing to do to track the last four months or so is I want to go click on my, uh, progress. What's up? Didn't you paint a bunch of Boar War and Zulu stuff? And... I did. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Let me pull up my Analog Hobbies stuff for this year, and that'll give us a good indicator of what I've been goofing on for the last four or five months at least. Um, okay. So I did, I did these War of the Roses, guys. The 28th. Um, I have not played with them yet. Next week, I am. Because we got a whole bunch of us that have been painting those up. We're going to play Hail Caesar. Like Brian's uh, monks with machine guns. Never got played in anything. What's up? Like Brian's monks with machine guns. Never got played in anything. Oh, I I played Wars of, I played Wars of Religion with mine. When? At... Uh, Tim's house probably nine months ago. I put on the one with the with 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 my my monks and priests with machine guns, and then a bunch of nuns with guns, a bunch of like Hasidim rabbis. Yeah, I called it the Wars of Religion, and people were expecting like Italian wars of the 1400s, and then it was the goofiest shit anybody had seen. Right. Okay, so here's one. All of Thomas Foss's rabbits and stuff. Yeah. I have not played with those because I haven't finished painting up the opposite side. You had that awesome fort too for them. I made all kind. Of, yeah, I think there's six houses and then two big, like a big meeting hall and then that little uh, fortified area. Yeah. Dude, get after it, man. Again, I'm painting uh, opposing forces. That's why I painted up all those medieval guys. I need to finish. I need to get the rest of the medievals out of the way. I did those 47 Martians. That was ridiculous. Um, the, so, games, man. You used the Martians, though, in that big time. Yeah, we played that twice in one day. Um, the medievals that I did paint, those orange guys, I think I did 30 of them and then I need to do the other half of the Robin Hood stuff right because I did the the knight or the the soldiers half of Robin Hood I need to do the merry men half of Robin Hood and then that'll be done and then that'll let me play with them and then with the rabbits as well so um, nerds nerd is this the kind of getting projects started and not finished situation that you're in where you paint half of what it is you need to do for the project and don't paint the other half. Oh, I mean, why do y'all do that to yourself? I mean, I guess that's no different than me buying. I was about to say, why do you buy and punch yeah. games and then they sit forever? And, and now I'm starting to sell them. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I did the. I did those. I painted up all the uh, gladiators for Arena of Blood. That was cool. Um, I painted some random. Uh, or no, I paint, I did that. I finally knocked that out with for Polly. I painted <laughs> the uh, the Royal Australian Navy as it sat in 1940 uh, in one to 2400 micro armor scale. That was cool. I am in the process actually. I did one of those today of building tripods for War of the Worlds, and then that'll tie in with all those 15 mil I painted. Remember those, like the civilians and stuff. Right, and then all those houses that I painted um, for that. Because I think I did eight ruined houses so far. I have painted for that, which is good. I was happy I got those eight done. Um, but yeah, because then for that I painted all those British 
troops and all those Americans. Um, I actually finally have some of the tanks and whatnot for that game also, so I'll probably wind up painting yeah. tanks as well as these tripods. Here's a better here's a better question, I think. Yeah. So how many projects and this is for the crowd too. How many projects painting wise, miniatures wise, have you started then pushed it away and have really never gotten back to it? I can't count that. It'd take me the next day and a half to find them all. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot. Look at three. I'm, I'm trying to understand because mine is so different on the miniature side compared to you guys. What your all psyche is about, you know, you because it is project when you you know if you pick out shit five British riflemen from World War Two, it's mm -hmm. a project. It's a project. And then it just, I'm always curious about because I mean, I'm just thinking of my little dabbling in it. You know, like I started painting all those Russians, then I stopped. Oh, let's paint these British. But I, but for me, it wasn't a project because I really had no intention of what I was going to use them for. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, so that's, that's the cool thing also is that depending on how you, you, you start, most of the time your projects aren't ever going to end. You know what I mean? Okay, so all right, so let's take this approach. In a one year period, in a one year period, average how many <laughs> projects you start in a one year period and then how many you finish in a one year period. Just I mean just off a guess even off the top of your head. Oh shoot, it took me what two now, years wait, now. Now, wait, 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 hold on. The project also has to include not just finish painting them unless that's all you do is paint them for you know maybe you're a what do you call that you get paid to paint for people but painted and played is a project finished well i don't put andrew to sleep with that one no i'm trying to think because again the mm -hmm. issue is is finished is is tough because quite frequently i'll have more than one i need to play a game i'll have enough to play a game or a bunch of games but then i'll still have figures for that period or that whatever that i haven't painted so i don't necessarily need those um i think i could host a good miniatures q a so here we go here's the next question because well the project thing you were talking about shoot. Again, the issue is the frame of reference is different coming from a war a board war gamer's brain than from a miniature player's game, right? Because with a board war game, you buy it, you have everything you will ever need for that game, with some notable exceptions. Right. And so that but that's not really unless you're playing 40k or something where, oh, I need to buy this list of models. Right. Then that's not really a you know what I mean? That's not the, yeah. the mentality necessarily yeah. behind a lot of people playing miniatures. All right. So, okay. Uh, I, okay. I'm going to assume because it's probably the same with me in, in hex encounter games. So a project for me would be playing a game start to finish. Okay. Which is rare. We know that, but so I'm assuming that when you start a project in miniatures, uh, much like with me, there's a motivational reason why I start doing it. How many times when you start a project like that, does your motivation just dry out and you never finish the project because you the motivation's gone? Probably about 50% of the time, at least for- And what does it? What is the reason that the motivation falls away? So a small qualifier there, not necessarily forever, but certainly for the time being to the point where it gets packed away and put somewhere. You know what I mean? Right, which can make it hard to bring it back out when it's hidden out of sight. Yeah, so there's a different, I mean, yeah, 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 uh, nerd is right. Uh, so like with my 15 millimeter ACW, for example, right, I did a ton of those, a ton of 15 millimeter ACW painting in the last year or so, right? Right. That being said, I... I think the last time I touched those was when my buddy Corey and I decided we were going to give Fire and Fury a shot in like 2016 or 17. Right. I haven't really messed with them since. 
Um, so that, that, uh, again, that's one of those weird ones, right? Because it certainly probably seemed like for the better part of a decade there yeah. that I had given up on them. I'll take Sorry. Greg, Greg's comment there. Sorry, uh, Brian. What's up? It has to do with the smell of new sprues and glue. That's, see, okay, so here's my, here's my bugaboo for me. This is the thing that, the, okay. And you, if you think about it long enough, you could probably answer this without me even giving the answer. I have my thing is what's what's the what's the one thing that you always hear me talking about? I do with all my games. Clip them, right? <laughs> Punch, clip them. I like doing that, and I feel empty if I don't have one that I'm punching and clipping. So, you know, Greg's Greg's glue and paint smell thing is the same with me of not having a game to clip and punch. It's yeah. fair. Hon honestly, Nord, I, I set, I enjoy fire and fury. You just need so many miniatures that it can be a bit of a pain. You also need a group of a group of players that are willing to say, okay, we're playing fire and fury today. Um, I've had a lot of fun and good luck with, uh, oh, geez, what's Dan Mercy's ACW? Um, Rebels and Patriots. That worked very, very well. Big fan. Well, clipping and punching, Greg, is the same as you paint. Putting together and painting. Gluing them together, painting them, and put them on base. And I, I, I will admit that there is... There's a much better visual to what you all do in painting and basing a miniature than there is to me just clipping a counter. Because the counters just there while they may look different in every game you play, they're all kind of still the same. They're all having a unit type. They're all gonna have strength numbers or movement numbers on. Whereas you guys in the miniature world, you 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 guys bring what I look at as a counter. You bring it to life in a miniature, which Hell is yeah. appealing. To look at it. It's a. It's beautiful to look at that stuff, and it takes a lot of work. And you guys put a lot, a lot of work into that stuff. And while I sit here and I jab you guys constantly, believe me, I am jealous and envious and madly appreciate what you you all all you people do when they're painting these things. Mm. Me, I'm a hobby butterfly, so I'm I go into all these jars. I'm like, ooh, you know, it's that squirrel effect. Squirrel. That's what it is. So I mean, I got a whole bunch. I'm looking at those PADNs that you guys been hearing me about forever. So, I mean. Well, here I am busting out KOW and and now the Crusades. <laughs> so getting ready to play an ACW game behind me. <laughs> so Yeah, I tell you, man, sometimes it's like it's like you I mean I can even set up the simplest of games. But my God, man, I might get it set up and go through the rules and it's three weeks later, I ain't moved the counter yet. Yeah. And then there's some games I'll set them up and Screw the rules. I'm pushing cardboard around because I want to get it, you know, I'm excited about that. Man, if I could just, I, I got to say that Into the Woods, even though I only played the first day, which really was my intention, that was, it's been a long time since I played a big game and I pushed myself that far on it because I just, there were times during the play of that where I want to, you know, what I'm just going to take this down and move on to something else. And I was looking at the map, and I'm like, man, I can't do that. This is too interesting right here. I don't. You don't always get that. I don't get that all the time. Cool. Marvel United game, cool. Yeah. Dude, if you want to check out a someone who's got like a big, big uh, uh, table of miniatures and he's doing Napoleonics, uh, McMurray, you should know him. Basement 1908 or 1909, whatever. Yep, he does. Oh my gosh, he put a layout there where it's, I don't know how long it took him just to get through one turn. 
Uh, I mean, he has to have, he had to have over a thousand twenty eights, not fifteens or anything, twenty eight millimeters out there. So it was interesting watch, and that video is about three and a half, four hours long too. But it's crazy. Oh, there's so much. There is so, you know, you, you, we hear these things about, oh, this is dying. This is dying. This is dying. That's bullshit. No. Accurate. That is such bullshit. I mean, I've got, I, there's a number of games here of all these damn games I've got on these shelves. I'll guarantee a good, a, well, a good percentage of them. I could set one up one night, you know, a small game, play it from start to finish, turn around and set it up the very next night all over, same setup exactly again, and have a different result. You know, or a different, maybe the same result, but a different approach. And miniatures has got to be even far more explosive in that realm than a table, than a hex encounter game. Because, you know, it, there's just too many things. You move in one way as opposed to moving another way. Or the dice roll is not the same in one day than it is the next day. I mean, there's just, the, I, I just think that the outcomes are endless in these things. Yeah. yeah For the record, I agree with Nord there. I like one map games also. Um, yeah. Charles is getting a little overboard too, man. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Plus, Charles would just, you know, take a week and get 50 28s knocked out. Like, it happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Would you consider the combined game for France 40 to be a huge game? I do. Uh, a huge game with an easier play method. But it's still a huge game. In your pictures, every time I saw the pictures you posted, I was like, and the way, maybe it's just the way you took the picture, but it looked like a monster game. Uh, yeah. After this is over, I'll be doing some basing here and, and probably go sit on my chair. Yeah, we're, we're Are you working this weekend, McMurray? Uh, no, I took off today to get on. Oh. You took off just to get on this thing tonight? Yeah. We love you. Wow. So you, so you have the rest of this weekend off? No, I got to back tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah, I was about to say that also means I'm going to have to bop off. So we'll talk yeah, to you guys soon. I, I was going to say, it's already over an hour, so I was going to say close it and down. We're playing an hour earlier starting tomorrow. So, uh, All right. Hey, chatters. Uh, thanks for joining in on another impromptu uh, live feed here. I'm sorry, guys. I'll try to schedule it sometimes. I just never know when. So thanks, Jeff. Uh, check out his channel, Hex to Hex, and then McMurray. Check out his uh, ghost channel, McMurray. And um, you all take care, and we will see you later on. See you. Hey, guys.